John here guys and today we're talking about why we are not happy with Happy Model. Now Happy Model is the maker of the very popular Mobula 7 which is a great flying, flying 2S micro drone. They are also the makers of the Snapper 7 that you also see here um, that has very actually been very quickly forgotten but we are not happy for both for very similar but different reasons now the snapper 7 flies great it works well but the motors start failing so quickly guys and they fail right here at the motor bell because they are made of aged belly button lint this was an extremely common problem with the snapper 7 even though it flew quite good arguably most reviewers including myself said that for the most part it flew better in a lot of scenarios other than the tightest spaces than the UR65 which was the darling of FPV for a while but this in itself isn't the worst thing okay they had one mess up um, and it was quite uh, prevalent in a lot of owners of the snapper 7 frustrating them to no end very high failure rates for this hobby now the very next product to market by happy model was the mobula 7. now why is this concern a concern because the mobula 7 shipped with a frame that was made of cotton candy on a wet day it was just absolutely completely fragile um it was way more fragile than an eggshell um to put it nicely now these micros really turn around fast it's funny how just a few short months later no one even remembers the snapper 7 and everyone's all about the mobula um, and the mobula does fly great it flies surprisingly well um, i would say not quite as good as the tiny hawk indoors but certainly better outdoors and if you had a little bit bigger space the extra speed that it can attain will allow you to do a lot more and it and it does fly great it really, really does. But here's why it's an issue, guys. Happy Model knew that those frames were a problem because that V2 frame was announced about the day before everyone started receiving their pre-orders. This means because of the lead time to manufacture that stuff that they knew weeks uh, and possibly even months in advance. And instead of waiting a couple of short weeks to take care of customers, they chose to ship anyway and use up old stock. After all, the Mobula is mostly recycled parts cobbled together. Now it does work and it works quite well. I've been um, talking with people on RC groups and even Nick Burns came along to defend the Mobula. Um, is Nick Burns on the payroll? I'm not sure, but he was defending it quite good. And he made a good point that I want to address in this video. Nick Burns said, why are you not being as critical of the Tiny Hawk? Because after all, the Tiny Hawk had its own set of problems. The Tiny Hawk cameras would pop loose. The Tiny Hawk could not successfully turtle mode on its own. The Tiny Hawk had these little spindles that could potentially break. Now, I think that those numbers are quite low. I haven't seen that personally, and I've hit it quite hard. Um, but let's address those, uh, those first two issues. The camera thing, I could see how that would pass by testing. It is quite a clever design that they're using for this frame. I think that's why it's so durable and survives so many crashes compared to so many other frames. Um, but part of the reason that the camera is an issue is because it is flexible. This material is flexible and the camera essentially fits in there um, in a very specific orientation. And if that camera flexes this way, um, or the, the hood right here, the camera can jostle loose. Now you just kind of pop it back in and keep going. What I've done is just added a dab of hot glue free solution. I actually ended up um, swapping the whole camera out for a slightly better one, but that was my choice. It wasn't required. Um, now let's address the turtle mode thing. There's no one S whoop style craft that was very good at turtle mode. In fact, I don't know any that could, and I could be wrong, but let's go back and review some of these reviews because I specifically remember having one where Nick Burns video said that it could turtle mode just fine. And it couldn't at all. How thoroughly are these things being tested over there? I'll find that and put it in the description. Now, 
Um, let's make a distinction here, though, guys. What Emacs has done by providing a four blade prop is enhance the product. It's not solving an inherent issue that with the standard operation of the product. And that's exactly what these other two things had. The Snapper 7 with failure of the motors and the Mobula um, 7 with its inability to fly more than a pack or two. I packed, I cracked my Mobula 7 frame on the first pack and I've read so many people on the Facebook group saying the exact same thing. So just because the thing flies well doesn't mean we can excuse them. Now one issue isn't enough to go after a company, but two in a row, that is a pattern. And in business, that subtle difference of making an enhancement later or you know, shipping products with a known defect that prevents standard operation of the product are two very different things. Well, I'm not gonna leave you alone. I want you to get mad. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. You shouldn't have to be the lucky one out of three or one out of four persons that can get away with flying your craft as it was purchased. Keep in mind, the Mobula 7 and the Tiny Hawk are the same price and you get quite a lot more features in here. You get an F4 board, you get a more durable frame, but as you know, mentioned in the RC Group's chats, these aren't really apples to apples products. The only reason I brought the Tiny Hawk in the first place is because they specifically asked, why don't you, you know, criticize the Tiny Hawk as much? And so we have to take a stand. The gaming industry is taking a stand against anti-consumer practices and companies that ship incomplete products like Battlefield 5 missing key game modes on day one and Fallout 76 that shipped an absolutely untested beta state incomplete product. This isn't 2015 where the only options that we have to fly are things that take a long time to ship from overseas with low quality control. Those days are what people are remembering. So those of us that have been in this hobby for two, three, four years, I've been in this hobby a little over three years. We remember when, you know, you might have to buy two or three copies of an Ishin QX95 or a wizard until you got one that worked well. And so we just excuse these manufacturing business decision defects as how things are. But no, we need to reward the companies with our consumer power, which is our dollars. Companies like Emacs, companies like Full Speed with the leader series, companies like Inductrix with the Blade series that has been consistently putting out reliable, great products, Companies like Beta FPV, the Beta 75X is a lot more expensive, but how many people do you see having issues with those? So it's not just the Emacs Tiny Hawk. It's, there's plenty of companies that are putting out quality products for similar prices or slightly more. That's where we need to be spending our money. Stop rewarding companies that are putting out inferior products that are purposely shipping things that are not ready for prime time. Just stop doing it. We have to discord and we got to stick up for those, you know, we have to look out for the righteous man and discourage those who would attempt to poison my brother. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. And I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger those who attempt to poison and destroy my brothers and you will know my name is those now vote with your dollars and let happy model know we are not happy happy model you have two strikes three strikes and you're out